Hello and welcome to Classroom Foundation students and anyone else following on the channel. We are happy to have you. Welcome to what we're going to call our JS or JavaScript Notebook. This course is meant to be project-based. This will be the only repo or starter code that we're going to take into our environments and welcome into our GitHub accounts. That not, is not necessarily a project, but however, is just what it is. It's a notebook, it's a playground a sandbox, if you will, where we can c go prior to or during projects and test out or learn basic JavaScript technologies. So without any further delay, let's get right to our normal process. My students, you should have an invitation in your uh, learning management system for your GitHub Classroom invite. So Google Classroom or Schoology, head on over to there, select that invite, and then you should come up with this screen, accept this assignment in GitHub Classroom, provided you're logged into GitHub already, and then simply accept this assignment as we have in the past. Let's stop the video, and at this next juncture, please go out and find your brand new personalized repository for your JS Notebook. We'll be right back. Okay, on the screen I have my brand new repository from GitHub Classroom. You should all have the same. It should be JS underscore notebook. That should be consistent with everybody. And then hyphen and your GitHub username. So, as we have in the past, let's select and download the starter code into our local AWS Cloud9 integrated development environment. So from remote to local we go, it's code, select the code button, select the clone feature, and we're going to choose the HTTPS version of clone. Put that in our clipboard and head on over to our Cloud9. Okay, on the screen right now I have blank panes. So I want to go down to up to view, layout, vertical split, create my lower traditional pane where we put our terminal. Let me move that up a little bit. Hit the plus button and select new terminal here. Now everyone, as you know, we want to start at the environment. That's our root directory and we want every project off of that. So make sure that you have environment as your only folder open and we're typing in the git technology, the command of clone, and then paste the URL that we just copied from the brand new repo. Hit enter, and now if we change, let me actually clear that terminal, and I want to change directory into my brand new repository folder on my Cloud9 IDE, and there we go. So now if I run a ls command for Linux, you can see a bunch of different files here. Many JS or .js files, which we will learn to know is our JavaScript. There are some familiar files here. Uh, README is the markdown, and we have one HTML, our index, and we have one style, I mean, one CSS, which is style.css. Okay, as is the norm, if you look on over to the um, file explorer on the left-hand side, we can also find that project folder <clears throat> and pull down all of those similar, or not similar, same files, so we should see them in both places. So it looks like our clone was successful. Let's clear that out. And I am going to actually close out of this pane. Next up, I want the only pane available to me. I want to pull down the file structure here, and let's open up index and style.css. So this is done for you. And let's take a quick look. Reminder, HTML has two subchildren, head, which is all of our metadata, ready to go. Um, our style uh, linked on line seven to our style sheet is there. And then in the body, we have a header element with an H1 tag. We have an ordered list element. And then finally, we have a bunch of script uh, tags that link up our variety of JS or JavaScript files. Now, the comment, as you can see, says, normally you don't link this many JavaScript files to a project, maybe one or two. Um, 
However, we are doing this for academic and kind of notebook purposes so that we could quickly go back to a topic and identify them and make sure they're all linked. All right, so with that open minimal style here, we're, we just have the traditional margin and padding of zero. Um, and, and that again, just makes all browsers kind of view the page without their own defaults for margin and, and head uh, padding. We have the header centered to margin auto um, text align center with a padding inside that automatically puts the heading in center and we've got some styling on our list item. So that's pretty much it. Very simple. Let's take a look in the preview and uh, no pizzazz here whatsoever, but that is what we are looking at. So I want to temporarily bring this out into the big screen here and in the big screen now uh, what I'm going to do next here my students in the classroom and on their school provided Chromebooks they do not have access to this um, feature because you need administrative rights and obviously that makes sense at a public school however I want to make it make you aware that you can do this on your home computer provided you have administrative rights and if we right click on this and we go down to inspect this is our chrome development tools and we may have you may have seen me use this in past projects when we're looking at elements here literally what comes on the screen and you could do this with any website you see the header the ordered list the head tag and so on the entire body tag and once i hover over the code or the elements in the middle of the page, the actual page on the left that is what users see highlights the different positions that we have. Then on the far right, we have all of the styling elements. So you could see the, the design and layout pretty quickly. Well, what we're going to focus on now is something to the immediate right of elements called console. And console is where we could simply use this as a very quick JavaScript editor. So now this is a JavaScript engine working within the browser itself. And I just typed in seven plus six and it's immediately returning 13. And we could put a variety of code to test the code in what's called the console. So I'm showing this to you because I wanted to make you aware that this is really the traditionally how developers use the council, you'll hear council uh, quite a bit. Council.log is one of the um, commands we're going to use often. However, we are not going to be using that in this classroom setting because of the reasons I told you before. So because we don't have access to, or my students don't have access, we're going to use something a little different. We will get to that shortly. But right now, let's open up the focus of today and that's the introduction to JS. So let's actually open up intro to JS in our editor and I'm going to completely kind of move the editor all the way over and hide and cover the file explorer. Okay. All right, as you can see a little refresher here uh, in JavaScript comments are are identified with forward slash star and star forward slash that is a multi-line comment single line comments are with two forward slashes and again comments are used for troubleshooting but also for notes on a page so that it the intent of the program is more readable and understood from the eyes of the developer developer and so that a team can actually understand and, and work together anyway so as our introduction, JavaScript is a programming language that is one of the core technologies of the World Wide Web, along with its partners, HTML and CSS. As of 2022, 98% of the websites use JavaScript on the client side of a web page behavior, often incorporated third-party libraries. What that means, client side, is simply any user that is calling on a website is accessing a URL, a domain name, and that domain name is going to a domain server finding the IP address, and voila, we get the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript returned to us, to our own computer, but in the browser. So 
JavaScript works in the browser. All major web browsers have dedicated JavaScript engines to execute the code on users' devices. That is different from programming languages like Java, for example, that are server-based, need a, a dedicated um, server or computer to actually process the code down into lower level language of machine language and so that those ones and zeros can be better understood and processed with intent. JavaScript is different. It's, the engine is right built into every single browser. So JavaScript engines were originally used only in web browsers, but now core components of some servers and a variety of applications. And the most popular of that is, is the runtime system Node.js. So the bottom line is JavaScript language became so popular that Node.js was utilized and founded so that JavaScript can actually be used as a server-side language. All right. A little note next is JavaScript and Java are completely different languages, both in concept and design. You could read the history about that. Uh, but let's get down to our next kind of comparison here. And as it was stated... JavaScript is the, one of the core technologies of the web. Well, the web is made up of HTML. That's your structure. That's your nouns. Defines the content of a web page. The adjectives specifying style and layout. That's CSS. And JavaScript comes in with the behavior of web pages. So it's kind of like your verbs. And anytime you see any activity on a screen, you click a button and some other action occurs, no matter what it is, that's JavaScript. My students up to this point have been writing and uh, developing static web pages with just HTML and CSS. So we're going to let, uh, let the, some fun begin here with JavaScript as we go forward. Now, programming languages process input in the form of digital information, process that in the machine, and generate digital information as output. So the whole game here is about digital information and every programming language primary or uh, initial focus is about the data types that can be used in that programming language. So uh, we're going to head on over to our W3 schools friends here momentarily. Um, take a look on the screen here. We're going to scroll down. This is a main page. Let's go to learn JavaScript. And in the tutorial on the left-hand side, we'll go a little less than halfway down to JS data types. There we go. Okay, and there are eight data types in the JavaScript line, um, language that will process this digital information. Today, we're going to look at only four of them. String, number, boolean, and undefined. And again, a reminder this is not a deep dive into the programming language of JavaScript. This is really a skimming of the surface in notebook fashion so that we could have an awareness when we actually deploy this into our projects. This still will be project based. So as we go deeper with projects, we will add um, and address the other four data types. So for now, let's go back to our editor and let's take a look at the first one. Let's go down to line 26 here. And let's type in the command let my number equals seven. And I'm going to bring that comment all the way back over here. And the comment says the number seven here. And traditionally, let's leave a space between the equal and the seven. So let me explain what's happening on this line of code right now. Um, the numerical value 7, the arithmetic count of 7 that can be used with order of operations and mathematical expressions and equations is the data type here. That's the number. Now, in any programming language, when you're using digital information, we often have the desire to store that somewhere. We don't want it to just be processed and then lost. So what's happening here is number seven is being assigned to a variable my number. We're going to talk all about assignments, variables in the next video. But right now, uh, my number, the number seven, is a data type of number. So let's go down to line 28, I mean seven, excuse me. And we're going to use my name. And I'm going to put this in quotes. And feel free to put your own name here if you like. 
But notice the same idea is happening here. I'm going to move that comment all the way over. The data or character strings, Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, all of those character references have their own ones and zeros behind it. The fact that we put this into quotes now is simply saying to JavaScript, please treat this data type as a series of characters. And we call that series of characters a string. And we're assigning the string Michael to the container, variable container, my name. So numbers, seven, and strings, series of characters, are our two first data types. Okay, next up, uh, let's do is retired. And let's bring back the comment. Okay. Our third data type is a Boolean. And there's only two options here, true or false. So what we're doing here on line 28 is the same thing. We're asking JavaScript to set aside a small container to hold or store digital information. But this digital information is simply a statement of true or false. Now, Again, we'll get into this with the variables, but uh, um, since we're here, oftentimes when you name a variable that's a Boolean, it's traditionally named in the form of a type of a question. Is Michael retired? The answer is false or true. It's one or the other. So uh, Booleans are, have that binary response. Okay, we have one more to, to, to look at here. So let's go down to the line 29. Let... And let's see, um, lives, I'm going to make that score right now. Let li, Score and semicolon. No equals, no assignment, that's it. So let's bring back our comment. Now, the first three, a number, string, or Boolean, in those three examples, a, an actual value, a digital value, was assigned to that space or placeholder called a variable. In this line 28, score is established, so it's still allotting space in memory for a piece of digital information. However, we haven't done any assignment yet, and again, we're going to learn that this is called a variable declaration. So at this moment in time, the value for score is undefined. So there are are four different data types that we're going to be looking at and getting familiar with pretty quickly when we start our projects. Okay, so as promised before, I want to show you another feature that is similar to, it's going to be our way for uh, my classroom students to still use uh, kind of a JavaScript console, if you will, without access to developer rights. So we're going to go up to view again and layout, vertical split, and I'm going to raise that lower pane. And normally we went to terminal here. We're going to go to new immediate window. And this is our JavaScript REPL. And the REPL simply allows us to test out any single or multi-line code in a browser-based environment for JavaScript. So it is mimicking the JavaScript engine that we spoke of earlier. All right, so in order to do this, let's establish some, let's go to our first line of our REPL and let's establish a first variable here. And my number equals seven. And at this point, in order to stay within the REPL, don't hit enter, we wanna hit shift enter. And now I wanna type the command console.log and I want to, oops, excuse me, run type of my number. So let's pause here for a second and explain what's happening. First line of code is I'm establishing my number. That space is getting assigned with the digital value, the number seven. Then on the second line, I'm asking to display to the log, to our console, log or display to the console, what type of data that variable actually is holding. So if we hit enter, you're gonna see that the 
response is number. All right, let's try the next one. Let my name equal. Remember, we want this in quotes. And don't forget, shift enter here. And we want to just type out console.log type of and my name. Okay, so we're assigning the string and Michael to my name. We're displaying to the console what type of data is that my name. We're set to go. Let's hit enter and notice string comes back up. I want to type I want to go to uh, one other display here. I want to do my fave num equals 31. Remember shift enter here. Let's type in console.log. And type of and my favorite number. So now notice we typed in 31. That's an actual number. However, it is in quotes. So let's see what the type of is. And that is recognizing 31 as a string. So be very well aware that those quotes now simply say, JavaScript, I want you to recognize this just as a string of characters and not a numerical value. So there is a big difference. Three and one now are just two separate characters that could just be like M and I. Okay, let's uh, try our next one. Let's do let is retired equal to false shift enter I always have trouble with console.log spelling wise and inside of the parentheses here type of and is retired okay so we're asking to, we establish a variable is retired, we're assigning the value false to it, and then we're asking that the type, data type be displayed to the console, and we get Boolean in return. Okay, so this wraps up our very brief look into data types and the intro to our JavaScript notebook. We will be using the JavaScript REPL here often, However, keep in mind that this is very similar to using the inspect feature um, within the Chrome development tools um, and using console within those inspect features. So once again, data types, numbers, strings, booleans, and undefined. Next up, we're going to take a look at specifically variables and get a little more understanding why we're using that word let. Thank you so much for coming along. We'll see you in the next one, everybody.